So phobias, are you familiar with them? If not, then let me explain them to you. If you are, then this is a quick reminder so everyone can start on the same playing field. So according to dictionary, a phobia is an extremely irrational fear of something, some kind of aversion. Now mind you, it's not the same as purely disliking something. For something to be a phobia, it must spark in you innate terror, a fight or flight feeling, oftentimes the latter or simply strike you with paralysis out of sheer fear. Sometimes it's due to a past trauma, maybe in your childhood, or it can have many causes. They're not always justifiable. If something inexplicably paralyzes you with fear, that's a phobia, and depending on what causes said fear, there's a whole spectrum of words to identify them. Personally, I have melisophobia and sphexophobia, which is a fear of bees and wasps. I'm not proud of it, but when I was a kid, maybe seven or eight year old, I did a cartwheel in grass and got stung pretty badly in the hand and that traumatized me. No biggie, that happens to a lot of kids. So why did it mark me? Well, two weeks later, I kept hearing buzzing sounds at night. Turned out there was a giant hornet nest in the wall of my bedroom. My dad told me to lock myself in the bathroom until it took care of it. Uh, since then, not a fan of bees. Yeah, still totally freeze up or run away whimpering whenever there's one nearby. Which isn't a great look for a dad, surprisingly. Anyway, odd analogy aside, I decided to look into anime characters and interestingly, several have pretty acute phobias. And I decided to cover all the interesting ones I could think of. Sometimes those phobias are purely out of comical relief. Other times, they're intrinsic to a character's personality or development. With that being said, here are 25 peculiar phobias in anime. Number 1. Spectrophobia in Cardcaptor Sakura Starting off with Cardcaptor Sakura, this is my all-time favorite anime, so I wanted to break off the ice with this one. In the show, the main character Sakura shows a pretty acute aversion for ghosts and spirits. A lot of the cards she must catch often initially comes off as ghosts, such as the illusion card or the song card, and that causes her immense terror, which most of the other characters find endearing, but that is due to the fact that her mother died and her brother, due to his magical sensitivity, is able to sense or see ghosts himself. He's been tormenting her about it when she was younger and that stuck around. Number 2. Entomophobia I think this is one we all found out about when we were kids, but we just kind of forgot about it. Misty from Pokemon has a phobia of insects. She says so as soon as Atch catches a Caterpie. Later on the show, uh, she gets a better handle on things when he becomes a Butterfree, but she still has to muscle through her fear for most of the time. Number 3. Androphobia With Kokoro Konak, Bakum, and Mariaholic, just to name a few, also known as the fear of man or guys in general. This one is a bit more common in anime, often used as a plot device to make some girls look more damaged. In the case of Batum, Himiko gets quite fearful of men after she got raped, uh, it's quite understandable. Similarly to that, uh, Yui in Kokoro Connect also almost got raped. And, and then you got Kanako in Maria Holic who just breaks in hives whenever a guy touches her. This one, not as heavy, but the condition is still the same. Number 4. Gynophobia Opposed to androphobia is gynophobia, or the fear of women and girls. More prominent in Girl Bravo, Mayochiki and Tell of the Abyss, in Girl Bravo the main character starts off with gynophobia, and as a comical endeavor he's tossed in a world where every person is a female, because that's comedy! Mayochiki has a bit of a more serious take on it, but my favorite is Guy from Tell of the Abyss. The reason for his gynophobia stems back to his childhood trauma, and I highly recommend you check out the anime if you can, or even better, play the game it's based on. Super tragic in the best way possible. Number 5. Astrophobia. Thunderbolt and lightning, very very frightening, me, Galileo. So yeah, astrophobia as implied by Bohemian Rhapsody was not a fear of the star, but a fear of thunder and lightning. Seen in the character of Ellie in Rave Masters, and also Aruhi in Who Run High School Host Club. Not the most far-fetched fear, actually. My sister, my my real-life sister, suffers from astrophobia as well. When we were a kid, a lightning strike hit a transformer near our house. Uh, the, the electrical box thing, not the car robot thing. Oh, and she also almost got zapped by one as a child as well when we went to Disney World in Florida. So it kind of marked her. <laughs> One's afraid of bees, the other one of lightning. Man, that's a superpower you don't want to see. <laughs> 
Number 6. Agoraphobia With Welcome to the NHK and Rosen Maiden, the fear of big open places. Also used to describe the fear of big crowds. In anime, this is generally used for hikikomori, which are people that are shut-ins. They hate going outside where things are not in their control. It is very apparent in Welcome to the NHK. And there's also June in Rosen Maiden that showcase some trait akin to that. Number 7. Xenophobia. This is the phobia my eldest daughter had since she was very young. She gets deathly afraid of strangers, aliens, mascots, or anything she's not accustomed to first, like even Spider-Man for a period of time. Similarly, Salty in Dorarara is also afraid of aliens, mainly used as a comic relief, but it's a pretty serious condition. I can tell you firsthanded. Number 8. Metophobia with Naruto. Well, not Naruto himself, like more Tsunade actually. The fear of blood, which I admit is not a great look on someone who's praised to be a medic. <laughs> but that's the case of Tsunade in Naruto after she lost her boyfriend slash fiance, Dan. What a cool Japanese name, Dan. She became paralyzed with fear at the first sight of blood. Eventually she does overcome it with the help of other characters. But yeah, no, it still counts. It goes in the book. It goes in the book. Number 9, Aviophobia with Nodame Cantabile. Afraid of flying plane or being in a plane that's flying in the sky so high. Surprisingly, a lot of people who claims are aviophobic actually aren't afraid of flying. They're afraid that the plane, which is a 500 ton hunk of metal, is suddenly not gonna fly anymore. So uh, I suppose the takeaway is don't be afraid of flying, be afraid of crashing. But Misty, did you know that statistically speaking, you're more likely to die in a car crash than in a plane? Well, statistically speaking, 1% of one thing or 1% of another is still one fucking percent too high, my dog. Did you know that if you're 50% more likely to get tails on a head or tail coin toss, it means you're never gonna get head? That's you, that's, that's how you sound. Shut the fuck up, Terrence. Wow, I was really passionate about this one. Number 10, claustrophobia. Probably one of the most famously known about phobia. Claustrophobia is the fear of tiny, tiny spaces, or rather like uh, cramp places, which happens in the case of Chitoge in the Sakoi. I'm not too sure if they adapted it in the anime, but in the manga, as a kid, she got locked into a washing machine for five hours, and that's enough to endure some pretty intense panic attack. Also, if I can add a side note, if you feel like taking on a claustrophobic challenge, I strongly recommend watching the movie Buried with Ryan Reynolds. It's an hour and a half long, and the story is about a guy who wakes up buried underground in a coffin. I think it's phenomenal, and if you have just a shred of empathy, this will fuck you up probably as much as it did for me. The ending, am I right? Very powerful movie, I recommend it a lot. Number 11. Ah, who comes up with these names? Atasagatophobia. Nailed it. In Noragami and F, A Tale of Memory. This one seems rather intense, but I think it's all something we share to a certain degree. The fear of being forgotten. It's the entire premise of Noragami with Yato, who's a god and wants people to pray to him. A feeling much more dramatic and literal in F. A. Tell of Memories, a story about a girl with retrograde amnesia that forgets anything past the 13 hours mark due to an accident she had. Of course, she'd have a fear of forgetting stuff. Atazagatophobia goes in both ways, forgetting stuff and being forgotten. Number 12. Elurophobia. If you really hate cats, then you might have a case of elur. Can't say that one, it's too hard. Elur. <laughs> Eludophobia. I can't really say I know many people whom are afraid of cats, but you might see the issue come up in Pandora's Heart, Ranma 1.5, and City Hunter. They all have characters with pretty severe aversion for these little ball of fur. Number 13, Cynophobia, with Meza only Koku, and I believe Ojamajo Doremi. Cynophobia is the fear of dogs. My youngest daughter, Skyla, has cynophobia right now. But she's not even two years old, so I'm sure it'll pass. Usually common mostly in children of young ages or after some particularly traumatizing moments with dogs. In most cases, they can appear scary because of their size or their loudness. Meizou and Koku and Ojamajo Doremi are the two that comes up to mind. Number 14, Shalena. Jesus Christ. 
Number 14, Chilonophobia with Lavina. It's the fear of turtles, not chocolate, the actual animal. I don't have anything clever about that one. We're finishing the trifecta of animal phobias, cats, dogs, and turtles. <laughs> There's definitely more, like uh, arachnophobia, spiders, uh, bats, chicken, reptiles, snake, frogs, and so on. But I couldn't think of any characters that stood out about their respective fears, so, uh, Lavina and turtles it is! Number 15, Germophobia and Otomizophobia. The anime clean freak Aoyama-kun has the premise of a high school student with acute germophobia or the fear of germs slash getting sick. If you're not afraid of getting sick, but you're just really like things tidy clean, like Levi in Attack on Titan, then you might have a case of misophobia or otomisophobia. Otomisophobia is the fear of getting yourself dirty. Misophobia is the fear of stuff getting dirty. Just a tiny difference. Number 16, Scopophobia. If you hated doing exposition in front of the class during your teens, then you might have struggled with Scopophobia, which is the fear of getting stared at or being the center of attention. Here's a trick though, if you hate doing classes speech, but they're mandatory, go up first. You gotta have to go anyway at some point. So if you go first, well, uh, first of all, you're ripping that bending off immediately. But secondly, everyone else is gonna be so mentally preoccupied with their own speech that they have to prepare in their head. Nobody is gonna pay attention to you. Your perspective of things is always gonna be worse than what it actually is. Like, do a test for me. Try and remember one embarrassing thing about every single kids you went to elementary school with. That's right, you can't because you don't care about other people's failures besides your own. Or rather, your own perception of them. So chill out and don't be so hard on yourself. I assure you, no one remember that time you stuttered and called the teacher mom in front of everyone else. That was a weird side note. Number 17, acrophobia. Often confused with vertigo, acrophobia is purely the fear of heights or high places. You can't have acrophobia without having vertigo. In either case, uh, this is present in the Mysterious Cities of Gold. Not that I expect anyone to know about that anime from the 80s, but if you like a good classic, that one was pretty fun as a kid. Number 18, Trypanophobia. Not to be confused with Trypophobia. That's the one that people hate about like the, the holes. <laughs> Trypanophobia is the needles or getting a shot. I mean, I get it. It's as fun as going to the dentist. But it's the kind of thing that feels rewarding once you get it. Pain sucks, but then you're immune. Hooray for vaccine. Unless you're an anti-vax, then uh, if that's the case, get the fuck off my video right now. You waste of a brain cell. Wow, that got personal. Personally, I don't mind shots, but drawing bloods, uh, not really something I enjoy. So I kind of relate on this one. Blood should be in my body. That's where it belongs. The doctor said all my bleeding was internal. That's where the blood's supposed to be. So yeah, they made a bit about Goku not wanting to get a shot in one episode once, so uh, I count it. Shut up, it's my rule, I do what I want. Number 19, space phobia. Can you guess this one? Uh, it's pretty obvious. Uh, the fear of the outer space. I mean, again, like aviophobia, I don't think it's as much the fear of space itself, but the apprehension of getting lost in space, because good lord, that would be terrifying. I mean, just knowing about your imminent doom incoming is enough to drive someone mad. Imagine you're in an astronaut suit drifting in space, oxygen is reaching zero, but then you get sucked into a black hole and get spaghettified. There's no, there's no time in a black hole, so you can't die technically. I mean, the science isn't sure on that one. I'm guessing you would die once you start noodling up, but uh, who's to say? Number 20, erythrophobia. Are you afraid of the color red? That would be very specific. Or simply blushing? If so, then just like Elise from Canvas 2, an anime about painting with colors, you would have won yourself a case of erythrophobia. Not to be confused with erotophobia, because that's the fear of female genitals. Or how the kids say, ew, a cooch. I don't know where I was going with that bit, but here we are now. And you're stuck with it. <laughs>
Number 21. Aquaphobia. Aquaphobia is the fear of water, not to be confused with hydrophobia. Hydrophobia used to be the archaic name for rabies, because people infected with rabies would reject water every time. Rabies is a freaking crazy illness. If you want to read about it, it's truly terrifying. Anyway, nowadays, the term hydrophobia is purely used as a chemical property for elements who do not interact with water. If you're afraid of water though, such as Kitska in Brynhildr in the Darkness, then that would make you aquaphobic. Number 22. Pyrophobia. The other side of the coin of aquaphobia. You got it. The fear of fire, flame, or shit burning up. Like my sick moves on the dance floor. You get it in Read or Die with Anita, which is a fantastic underrated anime, and Tomorrow's Naja. Both characters have PTSD with past events. Uh, it's a very tragic take. I would tell you more about it, but they call that spoilers. So yeah, fear of fire, look into it. Number 23, Kurophobia. Fear of clowns. Lots of people are afraid of clowns. I'm not really sure why. I don't get that one. They're colorful and generally happy. Maybe too happy? I don't really get the traumatizing aspect of it. I mean, yeah, you could have it with the killer clown thing, but and if that's the case, then you should be more afraid of killers in general than the clown aspect. Anyway, I don't relate to that one, but uh, it's a Mobile Fighter G Gundam if you're curious. Number 24, Quadrophobia. Yeah, I put out that number purposefully. <laughs> With JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Guido Mista. In part 5 of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Wind, you meet a character who has a very suspicious fear of the number 4, so he avoids anything that has to do with that number. That's called quadrophobia, or the fear of the number 4, and it is very common in Asian countries because the word for 4 is an homophone to the word death. Kind of how here in the West people are superstitious of the number 666. Because you called the devil with that number, it's the regional code. <laughs> and finally, number 25, asymmetry phobia in Soul Eater. We'll use once again as a comedy device. Soul Eater has that one character called Death the Kid, who got a severe OCD whenever he comes up to something that is not exactly symmetrical. And that's how we end up with 25 different phobias in anime. Thank you for watching. Now let me do my cool outro I had prepared for you. No, don't go away just yet. Just wait. It's gonna be worth it, I promise you. I think everyone has a phobia or something they are deathly afraid of. It can be something common like tight spaces or it can be something so rare it doesn't even have its own name yet. Like, I don't know, the fear of being transported to another world. We'll call that one isekai phobia. Fear can suck, but it's a corporal response to what your brain associate with imminent danger. Fear is nature's way to shift you into high tension alert. Of course, not everyone processes that state in the same way. Some people will freeze up, some will run away, and others will stand their ground and fight. You can read a lot of interesting information about the topic with just a bit of research. If you're interested in the psychology, I would also recommend the French movie called Force Majeure about a dad and his family eating at a snow resort when there's an avalanche that happens and he just fucking books it, leaving his kids and wife behind. Turns out everything is fine, but it's a really awkward ride home. Yeah, sorry daddy left you to die. <laughs> God, I could never do that to my kids. Anyway, fascinating watch even though it's not an anime and they recently made a reboot of it with uh, Will Ferrell. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I like to do some psychology and anime topics like this once in a while. It's really captivating. I'm already thinking of another one. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next Leaky Leaky Boom Boom. You thought I wouldn't put it in, huh? Nah, it's still staying. Turns a bit on the wrong side, I've been ashamed So many memories, you know I'd like to change yeah.